Are we ready? Yeah. We've okay. been ready. We've been recording this whole time. I yeah. know that, but that's we're waiting for that damn phone call. What phone call? Oh, it's not coming through now. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. All right. One, two, three. Hi. Hi. Welcome everybody to another episode of Be, Be Uplifted. Uplifted. All right. Woo-hoo. Well, there's like a 20 minute long intro before this start right here. Is it but really 20 minutes. It was like a 20 minute death stare from oh, Ari. Well, just that's that's probably gonna get cut off. But anyway, yeah, yes, that's good. Please, please yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what did we say that we were talking about? Who was paying attention? Relationship gentlemen? advice, tips, like long-term. But when you brought that up, the first thing I, w- I, I thought about was like, does it, does it relate to today? Like we don't, like people today don't have the patience that, like whoever I, I, I would mold my relationship advice to, mm-hmm. it doesn't work that way today. Mm-hmm. You know, like, so how would you maybe like translate it to modern time? Like say your daughter or like if you had a son or even a best friend came to you and was like, Hey, you know, I know you've been through ups, you've been through downs, you've been experienced oh. through dating. Like what is the best piece of advice that you could give me? I think you find the the middle ground between how back in the old days, we just kind of like, there's a lot of stuff that we grin and bear. Yeah. And nowadays, you know, that you're told you're 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 taught to vocalize mm-hmm. and be more um, vocal and to help n- nurture the relationship. I think finding somewhere in between where you're vocal, but not don't be nitpicky about say, every nitpicky. goddamn thing mm-hmm. either. Where you know, like you wanna you wanna build a relationship, but you're not trying to always trying to find a way out of one. That's true. Like that balance of like commitment, but also not putting up with bullshit kind yeah, of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like. It's like there's there's little things that will irritate you, like there's little things that irritate you. You know, I mean, with your against your partner, your friends, yeah, that you put up with. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, that's that's just how she is. Right. But if you could do that with your friend, why can't you do that with your partner? Mm-hmm. Why does your partner always have to be like, like I guess like the he can't ever fucking make a mistake or whatever. Mm-hmm. Do you have any other advice that you would give? How how about like uh, within yourself? Like, would you tell someone like you know be willing to take accountability or like you know what I mean? Like, what, what's something like that? No, I would say take you know take care. Oh, <laughs> did I only hit that one? So that we could no, I heard I heard I heard it I heard it twice. Okay. <laughs> We're better safe That's than sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think I think Vince wants to say something now. He was itchy. Because <laughs> the attention wasn't on him, so he got up. So now, yeah, I was trying to get on that side because it was their turn to talk. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, let me let me no, get it from the camera. What, what, what was I saying? I don't even oh, no, know no, what no, we're person, talking about. Personally, mm-hmm. I would say you always have to take care of yourself, mm-hmm. right? Because if you lose yourself and just um, basically. If you if you lose yourself, you lose that identity of the person that your partner was attracted to. Mm, that's a good piece of advice. Okay, Vince. Uh, Wait, we, we just ask? said that on the last podcast. I know. Okay. But this is more like the, the advice tips. Yeah. Should we ask Vince? Mm. Do we want to? <laughs> no, I'm, yeah, I'll let you guys go. go ahead. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> I am very curious to hear let your advice. Your so am I, I, am I giving advice to, to a hypothetical son or a daughter? Oh, shit. I'm so sorry. My kid. To, to somebody. You're just, just relationship advice. Like if someone was like, here, write a relationship column and give advice to our readers, what would you say? According to the last podcast, not the one. Well, you can't say that because I don't, we we don't know which one we're going to be going out first. The last one that I watched. (laughs) (laughs) According to that one, just don't trust anyone. Okay. So again, (laughs) as Wes said, our very, very special guest, Mm. sounds like there's trauma going on here. (laughs) Oh, no. No, no, no. I'm good. But... I don't know what advice I would give. Uh, just uh, just be open minded and. Um, How do you go from don't trust anybody and then be open minded? <laughs> <laughs> well, because the first one was a joke. <laughs> oh, I was uh, gonna say. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so be open minded. Okay, yeah, about be what? Be open minded. Um. Try try to listen without having an agenda. Okay. Other than learning. I and then, that. and then make logical decisions okay 
Jess. <laughs> what about you? Um, she's <laughs> she's all have fun, <laughs> live your best life. Right. No, stay outside. Stay outside. <laughs> Don't put your eggs in one basket. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you know what? Don't put your eggs in my basket. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, please don't do that. Um, That's true. I actually watched something today where um, this girl was talking about dating multiple people at one time Mm -hmm. and not just one person for the, especially as women, because women were so emotional. And then um, when we're dating one person at one time, we tend to, like I said on a couple podcasts ago, I don't remember when it was, but. when a woman only has that one person that she's talking to, she becomes clingy, clingy. Mm-hmm. So she was talking about dating multiple until you find basically the right one. And she has some other points on there. So um, I was the one who would date just one person, but I don't do that no more. So your advice would be to keep your options open. I would keep. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Cause I mean, we be wasting time sometimes with people that don't even deserve <sighs> Ain't Don't that the truth? <laughs> and we'll put up, we'll put up with more because we're only talking to that one person. So mm-hmm. we'll, it's almost we'll like accept you think there's more. No, nothing else there because we don't yeah. have we're comfortable or we don't have something someone else to talk to or we're just in that mindset where well I don't want to go find something else. So let me just continue talking to this person even though you know there's a bunch of red flags going on. So right. it was like it was like the hypothetical question that you asked that one that one time where. If you met somebody and you knew they were the one, but you were dating somebody, what would you do? Oh yeah. And it's mm-hmm. like, I, I still would jump ship. To the one. I would jump the ship, one. Yeah. but I would make them my main. No, no, no. Like if you met somebody that you knew was your actual like. So I, was she here for that hypothetical question? No. She so wasn't. I'm gonna ask you that question. Okay. So here's the hypothetical. So say you're with a guy and you guys have been serious. So monogamous, serious for mm-hmm. years, say like five years, right? And so someone, God himself, a prophet, <laughs> someone, right? Was okay. like, you're going to meet your soulmate tomorrow. And it's a guarantee that that person was made for you. But this person that you're already with, you have a perfect relationship. Like you guys have put in the work. You have no kids though. So no kids, but you have everything that you've ever wanted. And it's like a, like a 98% success rate for your relationship. There's those little normal scuffles here and there, but it's like the relationship you always dreamed of. But someone came and told you like this other person is your person though. What would you do? You're hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Would you jump ship or would you like, would you follow your logic, which is the 98% because you've been there, done that, know this, or would you go to heart where it's like, but you're being told that this is the one and there's like a hundred percent guarantee that that's your one. That's hard. That's um, why I was a good question. <laughs> but we do it like if you date multiple people, you kind of already do it because they're all going to be, they're all going to align. True. But then there's going to be that one guy that goes above everybody else mm-hmm. that wins the heart. Yeah, that's true. You that's know what I mean? That's a good way to put that. So yeah, but she's already saying that this one person, five years, 98%, everything's going good. Yeah, but just the, to jump ship, just t- for someone you don't know. No, no, you. He, it's guaranteed he's he's going to make your heart tingle. Yeah, like he's that, 100%. Is, that person was literally made for you. That is your actual 100% soulmate. Mm-hmm. That 1% might be that one thing that's that lacking. That one thing that... <clears throat> okay, so let me just say this. <laughs> <laughs> let me put this out there. Um, Dang, that's really hard. Um, what was I going to say? So that person who makes my heart tingle... Mm-hmm. That's what we're going off of, right? No, no, no. They, they could, they could. Okay, each one of them, the same, all across the board, mm-hmm. except for that one thing. That one thing is gonna whatever make, it is, yeah, whatever it is. So it could, he, he, yeah. Both guys can make your heart tingle, right? Yeah. Both guys can give you the oozy, oozy feeling. Both of them, but are you, the but same. deep down inside, you're gonna know that one of them is gonna be better than the other, just by that one little, you know, like, yeah. what would you do? I don't know. 
my thing would be who's going to be the person that because you can make my heart tingle we can be this we could be that so what i had but, told them was like literally god himself was like jasmine i made this man for you <laughs> you know like he, oh, he well, himself came down if god came down god damn yeah well, well, i mean if he came down i gotta listen right <laughs> <laughs> i gotta be like well i'm sorry dude i gotta go god, god okay. told god me god yeah. told me yeah, no. i said she this said. One. <laughs> yeah i mean at that point i would but i definitely go I mean, you would I'm, jump ship. I would. I would. So the reason why I asked that question too is I actually know a girl, and she went to um, a numerologist, and he read a bunch of stuff in her cards or in her numerology that was like a hundred percent correct. Like he had named the sickness her dad had that she didn't told anyone about, mm -hmm. what ha an accident like her brother was in, like all this like crazy shit that was like okay. And the last thing that he told her was like you're in a really good relationship with this man that you've been with for about three years. And she was like oh yeah. And he was like he's a great guy. You guys have and she he's you know based on numerology. He, you guys are going to have like a 97% success rate. And she was like, but, and he goes, but in November you're meeting your soulmate. Oh, wow. But every, and everything else he said was like, correct, you know, and they didn't even know each other. So she was like, it's hard for me not to like, think about that. You know, like, what the fuck am I going to do if that does in fact do happen? Guests? Do we have any guests in November? No. <laughs> I'm all, you're like, bring her here. <laughs> right. No, seriously. But yeah. So that's the question. But that, that, you know what? I think to make it easy, to make it simple. It's really it, just follow it, your heart. It, it really just happens all the time. You, you're you in a long, you know, you've dated somebody since high school. You get to, you know, after college, you guys have your own lives, like work lives. And next thing you know, this person comes along. That person comes along. Next thing you know, that's the one. When you put it in that perspective, that's actually very true. That we essentially, we do do that all the time. Just follow our hearts, follow yeah. our hearts. Yeah, that's true. I don't think I'd run that. If I met somebody that ends you up being... You follow your vagina? No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> when you meet somebody that, and, and they're the one for you, you're going to know. And there's no way that you're going to, like, not... I mean, would that be a piece of dating advice that you would give someone? Like, don't stress too much about it because when you know, you know. Do you believe in that? I don't believe you really know. Because I, I, I've dated somebody before, and I'm like, Oh man, this has to be the per my person. Yeah. Twice this has happened to me, okay? Yeah. Where I thought like this has to be my person. Like everything is like I even remember telling my friends like I'm going to marry this person. I'm going to mm -hmm. have another child. Was like literally oh, I'm what? like I really <laughs> thought that this was my person. Like I thought everything was the way it was supposed to be. And then one and then day, <laughs> I, then one day I prayed. I said, "Lord, because Lord Himself told me <laughs> <laughs> He ain't it." Oh, okay, that's yeah. not it. No, that no, my child, no, my child. <laughs> <laughs> when God speaks, you listen. <laughs> right. It took okay. me a little. I was like, "Nah, you must be playing." And then things kept. After yeah. that happened, like there was too much friction in their in their relationship. Mm -hmm. Like things weren't working. And I was just like, okay, God wasn't playing. So I, I had to let that person. Say something. No, I'm. Uh, I had to let that person. No, I'm go. listening. Why are you not listening? What happened? No, he said I'm listening. Yeah, he's. Um, so okay, so your advice would be, don't put your eggs in one basket, and keep your options open. And look, I look. I think at at the end of the day, <laughs> Vince has said this for every once. I, he doesn't want to say it not now, but I'll say it for him. There is, there is no the one, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You build a relationship. So at the end of the day, yeah, I'm never going to meet that one person that's truly meant for me. Yeah. But I think that I, I would be able to maintain a relationship with somebody that could essentially be the one for me. And okay. that's something, I, that's what I was going to say too before, um, something along those lines. Um, a lot of times, like you said, with women, I think especially, we go for who's pulling at our heartstrings, who's mm -hmm. doing this, who's doing that. But we're not going for the people that we can build with, that mm -hmm. um, our relationships, we can work together 
and we could somebody who's willing to work on relationships because you could love a person and just be like I, well I don't want to work on this with them yeah absolutely. I don't want to do this I don't want to do that you know mm-hmm. so um yeah I believe we need to find people who are willing to actually work with you and build with you in a relationship I'm glad that you said that because that's definitely something I learned growing up because I remember my parents used to tell me you know love is not enough they would mm-hmm. say things like that all the time. And I was with my high school sweetheart. They were living in Forest sweetheart. Ranch, though. Huh? huh? They were living in Forest Ranch. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Actually, that's when my parents had a very messy divorce is when we moved there. So we were only there for a very short amount of time. So there. <laughs> but um, Oh, in your face. <laughs> that was actually probably part of the reason why they divorced is they're trying to be bougie when they weren't and the money was problems, you know? So. Yeah. Money Anyways, is a big problem. And m- money is like, isn't that like one of the statistics? Like money is like one of the leading causes of divorce or something like that. Mm-hmm. I think they said that, well, this was a, this was a statistic that I heard a long time ago is if, if, um, the average couple that gets divorced, 80% of those would be prevented if there was an extra $200 in the account. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I believe uh, that per though. month, per yeah. month. Yeah. I believe that. But here's yeah. the thing. That's what I always say. You don't re- you don't get divorced due to money problems which people always say blame it Mm -hmm. they they get divorced because they have relationship problems and they blame the money for it and it's a biggest it's a biggest scapegoat i think i agree with that it's in my words though i would say that like their lack of being able to have the same values and the communication skills is what leads to the money problems because one person finds something more valuable than the other person you know so i definitely agree with that but yeah, um, my parents would always tell me, you know, love is not enough. And that's where I think what you said comes in, right? Like that's where you go, okay, well, you can love a lot of people, but not all those people, not not those people might be necessarily be healthy for you just because right. you love them. You know, there has to be the foundation, the healthy habits, the accountability, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, the, the keeping up with the Joneses thing is definitely what kills a lot of relationships. Yeah. It's, just, it's taxing. And it's just tiring. Oh, shoot. I have to give Emily the address. Sorry. Hold on, guys. Sorry, guys. You guys can keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think another thing that people don't really realize is it's it's not always a money thing. Or it's not an earnings thing, but it's a spending thing, too. Oh, right. that's a like, yeah, I, yeah. I was recently dating somebody that I was just like, why are you making such bad decisions? You know? Like, I've said it before. Why would... Why would you have a Louis Vuitton purse if you have cavities? You know? How did you? Okay. Like she told cavities. you she had cavities? You can see it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. You, some, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Like, I can't yeah, even send this. I'm like yeah, distracted. <laughs> yeah, really? Like, you really get down. <laughs> Can you no, right, for oh, wait, I was going to say, can you just tell me it so I don't have to look uh, for the oh, text? But. So you stopped talking to her because she's... No, we broke up. Because she was irresponsible. You know, buying outfits that she didn't fit into, but then it was uh, she was using it as motivation to fit into it. I was like, the fuck kind of dumb shit is that? Can you text me the address? <laughs> no. Why? Because I don't have my phone. Oh, because I can't find it in our messages. So right how now. long were you with this person? Uh, Two years, I think. Two years. Is it two years. Shit. Two Maybe years. a year. Maybe. No, I had. Oh well, yeah. So when did the red flags start? Uh, they started before we were together. I just didn't notice them until, like, they were just so often. Oh, was she the only one you were talking to? Yes. Mm. <laughs> no, they were officially together. <laughs> yeah, we were together. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So if you had options, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, leaving was an option. Mm, okay. Before she became official, was she the only one you were talking to? Yeah. Do you think that you would have gone for the girl with no red flags if you had options? No. You still would have gone for her? No, I wouldn't have talked to anybody else. Okay. I think that's like a, a beating a dead horse that time. No, no, no. It's okay. Well, no, no, no. I was just. No. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. We can. No, can I'm just noticing no, that he's no, going to no. change. Yeah, he's yeah, 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 change. yeah. I'm not saying anything no, that, about your I question was just asking. Wondering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I just yeah. want to see your um, thought process. Well, exactly. I just don't. I, I, oh, thank you. I don't see a reason to talk. I didn't see a reason to talk to anybody else because I really liked her. 
Yeah. That makes sense. And you knew she was single? Well, yep. <laughs> they were together, weren't they? No, I'm saying no, like before, in the beginning yeah. when he chose, when he yeah. made the decision, you know? Yep. I already knew that she was single. Because I did my homework. I didn't just pick a random. Still didn't work out, though. <laughs> right, because there was red flags in the beginning that you ignored. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have but, you, you know, I had a friend that could have told me, hey, she has crazy eyes, by the way. And I'll be like, all right, cool, for sure. But Crazy you know. eyes? Like she had a lazy eye or something? No, like, I have a really get big gift. I mean, I've been wrong like maybe once before, but where I have told people like she's got crazy eyes and they end up being like, a psycho like a, oh. a like she ends up being like i don't know i just sense it you know like oh yeah i don't know about that girl she kind of got crazy i wouldn't eyes. call her a psycho i would just say that she wasn't right for me yeah i mean she's <laughs> okay <go ahead>. <laughs> 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 but, but yeah. like red flags though like i don't know there's there's certain red flags you can deal with okay like what one. well it depends what the red flag is well name one that's said. tolerable like it's a red flag but it's not so something. So I guess that would be like something you don't like, but you don't mind dealing with. Well, there's differences between red flags and deal breakers. You right. Know what so I'm what's saying? a red flag that's tolerable to you guys? Oh, I have. She loves like Taylor low, Swift. Low tolerance. <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> is wrong with you? <laughs> that's a red flag. She has to be a. Swiftie. Why is that a red flag? I don't know. No. I like how Vince <laughs> is like, like. She has to be a Swiftie. Yeah. That's so cute. Any. <laughs> They're like, as long as she's got big tits and ass, I'll take all the red flags. <laughs> right. I'll work. I'll work on it. <laughs> no, I, I would say that a red flag for me that is tolerable is if she wears a lot of makeup. Okay. What if she looks the same? Does it not matter? Or does it matter if she looks different? You know, because some guys are like, well, I don't like a lot of makeup because it makes her look like a different person. But there's some girls that look the same with or without makeup. I haven't come across that. Usually the girls that wear a lot of makeup, they they, they look, look completely of, different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Red flags I, I can deal with. No. First of all, a deal breaker would be keep trying to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. Spending way too much money and that's done. Like, I'm like, no, I'm not dealing with that ever. Again. You mean like beyond the your means kind yes. of a thing? Well, mm -hmm. not, not, yeah, beyond your means. Okay. I don't mind spending a lot of money as long as it's smart money. Like, but what is what is considered smart to you? So like, okay, party posted this. She was all like, "All you bitches trying to get these Chanel bags." I bought a refrigerator, and I was like, "Damn, that's a dope ass refrigerator." That's a fucking dope refrigerator. I would oh, buy that yeah. over a Chanel purse any day. Fuck yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, or maybe get your teeth fixed instead of getting a Louis Vuitton bag. You yeah. Know? Or how about instead of driving a BMW, you don't live in a uh, apartment in the ghetto. Okay, what about this? What if all of your responsibilities are taken care of and you want a Louis Vuitton bag? Are you cool with that? Yeah, because, yeah, yeah you deserve it. That's okay. fine. Yeah. but I just know there's some men out there that are like, you don't need to have name brand. Like, who cares if we have the money, no, you know? No, I think it's like, um, like, don't buy a Louis Vuitton purse if you can't get your oil changed. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. If you're all that. four of your tires are bald as fuck and you need your brakes changed, <laughs> yeah. don't be driving around your car in a, with a Louis Vuitton purse. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I don't know. It might be a knockoff. Y'all don't know. Well, and I've told them. Then what's the point? And I've told this to them too. Like my mom's gifted me a couple of like really nice purses and I feel yeah. weird wearing it because I'm like, this wasn't my money. Yeah. But I'm broke. Like, no, no. <laughs> you know? Okay. Wait, is it okay for guys to wear like fake Jordans and shit like that? No. Never. What are, do you guys think so? No. Never. Can you tell? Yes, I can definitely tell. Wait, is it okay? <laughs> yes or no? I if don't if think I so. were to wear, if if I were a random guy and I was hitting on you and I was wearing a fake Rolex or I was driving a rented Lamborghini or if I was Okay, but are you trying But I I Wait. if I can't tell, why does that matter? No, is it okay though? If I can't I don't tell. know. Like if I if I have a fake Rolex. So basically I'm putting up a front. Okay, so if what you're I putting up a front and I later find out that you're it depends on how you present you're, it. You're yeah, because I was gonna say that. Like if I, if a if a guy comes to me like, dude, look at these fucking J's, they look real, right? Like I got hooked up. 
I might be like, haha, that's funny, that's cool. But if he's like, yeah, these motherfuckers are real and I have all kinds of money, whoop de whoop de wham. Yeah, that's different. Then, you're, then you are fronting, you know? But if you're like proud of the fact that you got a deal, then maybe that's a little different. Okay. Yeah, but the guys who are like, nah, I got this type of money, that's, I got this, it cost me ten thousand dollars for this watch it was actually five dollars down at the swap meet like yeah, stuff that's like not that cool. when you're like hella front in like yeah and see that's how i feel about girls that wear a lot of makeup wear push-up bras wear high heels you know wear spanks that does not wigs the same eyelashes it is not the same. <laughs> he's literally talking to two girls that wear like makeup e- every lashes everything he's fucking name. Say, Listen, Vince. <laughs> I'm your back. But but I mean like okay, but you guys you guys That's wear disrespectful. No, think of this though. You guys wear all of that to attract men. But when you wake up no, in the that's morning, that's what men say. I have this conversation with men all the time. They're always like, "You do this stuff for other men." No, a lot of times that women do stuff, they do it for them for themselves. They're not doing it so a, a guy can look at them and blah blah. blah. No, no, I, I do, feel I want to look good because I want to feel, feel good. Because yeah. if I give a fuck about what men said, then I'd go to the store with my makeup on, you know. Like, but I'm just like, like today, I'm like, oh, I want to look pretty when I'm in the camera for me or me, you know. <laughs> like, because when, when I, I look, look at back, myself, I want to go, oh, look, she cute today. Yeah. You know? I mean that that's, that's kind of true. I mean, if you look at it from a guy's point of view, if if, if like Jinko Jinko jeans came back in style, I ain't wearing them. Yeah, yeah. You know, just just because. Just, yeah. be, just because I'm like, nah, it's okay. And yeah. That's true because there's all. That's a good point. There's a lot of trends that I don't do. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't like them. You they know, just, just don't look good on me. Yeah, they just yeah. don't look good. But if there's certain things that make me feel good, make me feel cute, then yeah, like I mean. Like, but now I want to hear the rest of Vince's point, though. So you were saying we're different because we do it for guys or something, something. What was the rest of that point? Well, it's for the, it's, it, what's it called? It is, it is vanity, I would say. It's, um, it's for, uh, what's it called when you're posting and you're trying to get validation or no? What, what is it? Validation. That's right. Like a thirst trap? Not a thirst trap necessarily, but it's like, um, I don't know if that's even the right word for clout. No, I think he's thinking like validation and um, affirmations from yeah, people. Like, I guess, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's just weird to me because like, I, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm, I just think that sometimes we just have way too many goddamn fucking labels. Like let people, like people do what people got to do. If she looks hot and whatever she's fucking doing, she looks hot and whatever she's fucking doing. Actually, you but know, I people don't, with that, that thought process though yeah. are the reason why I stopped making content is because I felt like people were judging me and going like, oh, why does she do that? She wants it for attention. But that kept me sane through the pandemic, doing content and like making makeup that looked like art, you know? Like it was much more to me than vanity and like getting likes. Like if I had 30 likes or if I had 200 likes, it didn't really make a difference to me it was just yeah. something that I posted because because I liked it you know and then I found a community that liked it too so we would talk about it like people would be in my DMs like oh what makeup is that or like oh cool girl I love that look I'm gonna recreate it you but know those, that's you as an influencer which you're contributing to other people but and this is probably why I don't think the same way as you guys or I, I don't know if you guys do relate to this but if I did have like Jordans if I did have um, a Rolex stuff like that and if i was really doing it for me that means that i would wear that shit around the house but uh, to be honest with you i don't you know if i had if i had nice jewelry i wouldn't wear it around the house when i'm home alone i wouldn't wear a nice watch and and that just proves to me that i'm really not doing it just for myself but i think sometimes mentally though like like if you were able let's say rolex right it's like five ten grand just for a, like a regular submariner. Yeah. Right. But those are the hardest to get. Yeah. But I'm saying like sometimes p- those are people's goals. So I want to, affo- I want to be able to afford a Rolex. Yeah. And they, j- they just get it. It's not necessarily for the woman, the women or whoever. It's just like, Hey, I work my ass off to finally afford a fucking Rolex. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at GQ magazine when you're younger and you're like page 14. It's always the Rolex ad. Yeah. Again, though, it's, it, it if I'm not out. if I'm not doing um if I'm not doing it for the validation, she then doesn't I have would an just iPhone. She needs like the actual address. She can't do the location thing. Sorry, guys. <sighs> she could actually click on it and do it. I, I do it all the time. <laughs> okay, so 
Okay, I'll, I'll uh, go ahead, Vince. Okay. No, so that's that's the thing. I I I just don't relate to it because if I were to put myself in the same scenario with something that would be relatable, I wouldn't be wearing a Rolex or or like wearing expensive like jewelry walking around the okay, house. Okay, so something relatable to you. What, what do you mean? You said you said if it was something relatable, so shoes aren't relatable to you. Rolexes aren't. No, 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 what I is have, something that is relatable to no, you? No, but right? I have I have Jordans. I just don't wear them because like I have nothing. I, I'm not gonna match for anybody if I'm by myself. You know, if right, I have what what I'm saying is what is that thing you go to that's like like yeah when I when I put this on I feel like this or when I get this or when I buy this this is what. What what is that thing for you? Well, I think that the disconnect is I'm I'm saying that it's not relatable because I don't think the same way as you guys. I do actually have nice things that I'm very proud of, and when I'm around other people and stuff like that, I'm like thinking, all right, cool, let me let me flex a little bit. But I also know that I'm wearing it for the validation of other people. Thank you. You know, same thing yes. with like trying to get likes on Instagram. Like if you really wanted to look good for yourself what's the point of posting it mm -hmm. without you know like other than validation now if you're an influencer like Ari, i'm glad that she posted stuff because she was helping people get through some tough times like with the with the makeup with the things that we're going through the uh the pandemic and everything that's very good you know mm -hmm. make and she uplifted other people but if you're not doing that if you don't have any monetary value for doing anything in in that sense and you truly do these things for yourself, why are you posting Why photos? does it have to be monetary, though? There's uh, people out there that maybe do makeup because in the past they felt they had really low self-esteem. They learned how to do makeup, and now when they put it on, they feel better about themselves. Why can't that be the situation? How I feel about that, because like I said, I talk to men about this all the time. So to me personally, mm -hmm. I don't care what men say about my hair, my lashes, my makeup, anything that I do for myself. Because at the end of the day, one of the things men, a couple men like, you know, that I, I used to date or talk to or whatever, they were like, I want to see you in your natural form. I love you in your natural form. I want to be this, that, and the other. I want you to look like this, blah, blah, blah. And then I started thinking, I don't know if you guys remember this guy. What's his name? The little Derek Jackson person. He said the same thing. He was a relationship advice person, and he was given. He would always give the relationship advice in the car or whatever, and tell oh, men. You okay. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing. His wife at home, Christian, Christian woman, completely natural at home. Everything. I love my wife like I think this. That was cheating. <laughs> it was cheating. Who was he cheating on his wife with? A woman who had a fake ass, fake boobs makeup lashes wig ev completely fake and at home she's being natural for her husband because that's what he wants at home but in the limelight what does he really want he wants a girl that look like look the part so mm -hmm. i could give two shits what a man says about my hair my makeup any of that i'm wearing it because it does it doesn't matter mm -hmm. it doesn't y'all like it y'all like all of it so yeah y'all y'all gonna y'all still gonna that's fuck true. if it's fake you're gonna fuck if it's not it doesn't matter if she has a pudge, no pudge, makeup, no makeup. It don't matter. So I don't really care. I'm going to continue wearing my makeup. Plus, I do makeup. So. No, see, that's cool. But then the, you're you're contributing to other people. You know, you're, 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 you, whether it's um, whether you're you're teaching somebody else or if you're selling a brand or, you know, inspiring people. I can understand that. Mm -hmm. But again. If you're truly doing it for yourself with like you're you're not getting I paid started for it, doing makeup for myself. Before I started doing other people's makeup. Before I started doing I did it for myself. In San Diego there was if I wanted to go out and get my makeup done, there was not a person in San Diego that did black girls makeup. Mm. So I learned how to do makeup for myself. So I could feel a certain way about myself. And then I was like, well, let me, now let me teach it. So then I went to school and all this other stuff. And now I work at a black owned spa 
um, th- where you could get your makeup done and stuff like that. But it started with me doing it for myself. So you don't know what someone's reason is for doing what they do. Yeah, that's true. I don't even remember what we were talking about. Definitely not like, that, yeah, but yeah. it was a good tangent, I think. Yeah. I, I liked it. Well, he was talking about women in their makeup and not doing stuff for themselves. Well, yeah, he was, was saying that red flags are people that wear yeah, lashes, that wear and, make and, wigs. lashes and, yeah. wigs and I don't know all that good stuff. Do you mean like women that wear that every day just to wear it those are the red flag women is that no, what you're trying I, to say no i i what i'm saying is the ones that have the the instant gratification of wearing the push up bra and the makeup and the wigs and 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 everything without the uh what's it called the sympathy for those that actually put work in or without wanting to change so that they don't have to do that or do you it can't less. change saggy titties like that doesn't you have to wear a push-up bra like that's what you have to do you can't do push-ups and your boobs automatically well, come see, back to where You're they were especially if you had babies like that's not a thing mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not a thing i'm sorry after I had my kids, I hated the way my boobs looked. I definitely think, hated it. No, so girl, that's why mine are fixed. <laughs> yeah, like, come on. Girl. Like, you can't, like, and, you know, I would read these books, like, well, if you do this many push-ups and you rub these creams th- on this it, this cream, then it will make them perky. I got no, a that's cream for a it. lie. <laughs> that is a lie. It does not. And still be uplifted. <laughs> yeah. So if there's, no, if there's no control over that, I can completely understand that. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. You know, do. but. You that at the same time, bra. it's <laughs> not the only thing, too, that I'm talking about. Like, there's, like, Spanx. You know? Like, I understand if you want to do that, but then don't rely only on that. You know? Do some cardio. or Maybe don't eat as much. Or, instead <laughs> of, like, wearing makeup all the time, drink more water. I mean, like, no, that, that's, that, that's just me. And it's, like, there's, there's hard work that people put in and they're not willing to do it, but they want to take the benefits of the instant gratification that's only temporary. I kind of understand where you're coming from now. So you're saying like, you're not necessarily not okay with those things, but you're okay with people that use those as their shortcuts to get the instant gratification. Yeah, it was more of like the the people that look at things as crutches instead of tools. That's my red flag. Okay. Wow. Well, not mine, but the one that I... What do you have to say, Clear? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just like, that's a like, cool. Quite the segue. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, like, after all that, you ain't dating nobody. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be exhausted, but I can't go out of my house. I can't look at a, I can't look at Instagram. I, I can't look at the person walking down the street because I'm thinking all of that. Mm-hmm. I'm okay yeah. with that. No. No, you're not okay yeah. with all that. Trust me. Uh, I'm really no. okay with that. <laughs> Dude, Do you know if you I was your girl, your I would be so worried all the time, like, oh, he thinks I'm doing this for this. Yeah, or fine. he thinks I'm doing no, this for no, this. I'm saying, like, <laughs> as the other person, yeah, yeah, exactly. you can't live your life, like, ultimately judging everything everybody does every second of the day. Yeah. It just doesn't work. I, it's, it's just so exhausting to do it like that. Yeah, like, if true. you find somebody and you're like, oh, we're cool. Next thing you know, you're like searching for every little negative thing. That's another tangent. Do you think you do that? Do you think you look for things wrong before you look for things how right? it's going to be right? Mm-hmm. I would think that I probably scale things. I don't. I don't think. I don't know if I would say wrong or right. Um, but I definitely give less respect to people that look for the instant gratification or the temporary solution, mm-hmm. as opposed to the right thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, like, yo, do you if that's if that's what you want to do, but then don't expect me to constantly give you the the validation of you taking a shortcut. Mm. Okay. So back to <laughs> relationship <laughs> advice. <laughs> okay. I, wait, hold on. Let me just say this. <laughs> I actually talked to a guy, I want to say kind of like Vince, and it was... What's the word I want to use? Probably delusional. I wasn't going to say... 
like not heartbreaking, but it, it's yeah, like it was just like pathetic. No. Damn, I like damn, <laughs> right? Because yeah, you right. know the 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 reason why we're talking is because you you think I'm such a dope female and this all this like I your personality is everything that you have lashes on though. I need you to take those off. Oh, but you put makeup on today. I need you to take like it was a constant like. Every time I did something, and it wasn't like I do it out because during the week I usually I don't wear makeup, like I'm nothing. I'm like, if you see me at work, you'd be like, oh, okay, this girl. That's but like, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't. I, it's not like I do it all the time. But when I did do it, it was just like, why are you doing that? You need to take that off. Why are you doing? No, I like you like this, bro. And it was just like, bro, shut the fuck up. <laughs> just shut up. Like this. This is. This is me. This is what I do. This is like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't need you to validate me right now. Like, I wanted to, I want to wear this makeup because I want to wear this makeup. Like, I want to do this. I want to put these lashes on because I want to put these lashes on. Like, I actually had almost the opposite of that, but I can relate in like an opposite type of way. Like, I had a, I had a guy that I dated that thought I was like a really dope female, right? And he loved everything that I did. But I, he would always criticize other women, right? Like he would be like, yeah, well, that bitch over there, da 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 da. And oh, damn, check out that bitch. She's wearing this and that. And it made me self conscious to try those things, even if I was interested in it, because I'm like, well, he said X, Y, and Z things about those girls. So if I like it or if I do it, he's going to look down on me, you know? So it's like he was just always critical, kind of like how Vince is about yeah. every fucking bitch and everything that he sh they did and what they wore and what they look like that it almost made me retreat into, like, not wanting to do anything out of his, like, little mold, right. you know? You know, yeah. uh, to be honest, like, the, let me put myself in this scenario. Let's say if me and Jasmine were talking mm -hmm. and then um, she was self-conscious about one thing and then she does, like, what I would consider a shortcut to get out of that, mm -hmm. right? I'd still let her do that. I don't care. That's not a red flag. But it would be a red flag to me if she kept on complaining about her having to do that. And there is a solution, but then she just chooses to take the easy way out. Mm. Okay. So, for example, if she's like, I'm so fat. And then she and then wears I, Spanx, but then continues to cry about how she's fat and how she has to wear Spanx yeah. instead of putting in the work. If she if she if she said that to me and she was eating Pringles while she was doing that, and I'm like <laughs> every day, yo, I'm gonna go to the gym. Do you want to come with me? Uh -huh. She says no. It's like all right, cool, whatever. But eventually, I'll just be like, you know what? Like we just don't match. Uh -huh. You know, it's not a like one and done thing. It's like yo, I'll notice it. I'll try to help and if she doesn't want my help then i'll just be by myself that's cool mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense for me so <laughs> relationship advice <laughs> <laughs> i keep trying to bring it back like, <laughs> <laughs> okay so my next question was going to be to you guys which is kind of like the transition i was trying to make with how my parents used to say like love is not enough right like you have to build right, right. what is some she advice that. that you um have been given that stuck, you know, like, did you have friends or like when you were going through a divorce or like mm. something that your parents taught you growing up or whatever? Like, did you, have you received advice from someone in regards to a relationship that kind of stuck with you that you would pass down to other people? Cause you thought it was so good. Oh yeah. I've always passed it down here. I've said it numerous times, you know, like the, I was reading this book on, you know, on marriages during the time that my marriage was falling apart. Mm -hmm. And that one thing, I've said it here multiple times. You don't go into any relationship looking for love. You technically learn, learn to love the one you found oh, because it's not, it's not, it's not, nothing's going to be perfect. Right. Right. You, everything's hunky dory until you like decide to live by live with each other. Mm -hmm. Then all those little things start creeping up. Oh yeah, for sure. Then, then you're going to have to either, you know, like, as I said before, you can't nitpick, right? You, they, you, they might not be the thing you, you, you like, but they're in, inconsequential. Right. During the day. So what? Why am I making a big deal out of something so little? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you learn like, to love those. I feel like, um, I'm going to say personally, I didn't nitpick in the beginning because what's a certain someone because you were, I was basically trying to, what's the word I'm looking for? Once, once it became a relationship, it was stuff that I realized that, wait a minute, I don't like this stuff. But in the beginning, I accepted it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done that before too. And then once it became like a relationship, you're kind of like, 
wait a minute, is this something I really can handle? Is it, I feel like, um, that's why I was saying about the red flags and not paying attention to the red flags. Cause I feel like a lot of people, um, in the beginning will let shit slide, let it. Mm-hmm. And then once it becomes a relationship, now it's like, well, I'm not going to let it slide no more. Cause now we're in a relationship. Now we have a title. Now it's this, mm-hmm. I don't like this stuff. I don't like this. I don't like that. Instead of in the beginning being like, Hey, you know, these are some of the things I don't like, whether they change it or not, then, then you yeah. can go from there. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I think that's definitely a good piece of advice. Cause I'm, I'm guilty of that for sure. Yeah. Where you just kind of like want to be the accepting, understanding person. And right. then you realize later like, Oh shit, this is actually getting on my goddamn nerves. Right. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> I really don't, I don't do like this. this for the rest of my fucking life. <laughs> right. You know? Exactly. Well, you know, when I say that it's more or less like the baseline, it's not just, it, I'm not saying don't communicate either. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. obviously there's shit that, you know, you, you're not going to nitpick, yeah. but it can eat away at you for your yeah, entire definitely. lifetime. So you have to talk about it like, Hey, it's let's, the let's whole talk communication about this shit. thing again, yeah. you know? But yeah, I just, I just think that, you know, people nowadays, they don't want to work on the relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so easy to just split and go mm-hmm. and it's easy, it's easy to get a divorce. Yeah. It's, it's, it's harder to get married than it is to get yeah, a divorce for sure mm-hmm. you know and that's that's why i feel as though like people really just have to work on your relationship how about you jasmine do you have any piece of advice that someone's given you that kind of like stuck with you in your maybe times of your relationships failing or like just growing up or something like that yeah um when I, actually when i was married um one of my friends told me um basically you have to sit down and realize what your worst is and what you will not tolerate and what's going to make it to where you actually step away from that relationship. Um, Because there are certain things like, yeah, uh, we fought about this today. We fought about money. We fought about whatever. But what is it in that you will accept and what you will not? What is your thing that will make you walk away from your relationship? Mm -hmm. Mm Non-negotiables. You have to be in tune with those things. Um, and something else that I uh, was going to say to one of the things like when I was in my marriage, there was something um, what people don't know. I don't know if people know, but I don't know, talk about it too much. But I used to be I used to go to church like three times a week. Like Girl, I was me like, and you both were on that. Tip. I was like, I was one that. of those. Yeah. I was one of those people who would knock on your door and ask you if you wanted to be saved today. <laughs> like I was that. I, mean, person. I wasn't that, but I definitely took I someone to church outreach, every service. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, I would take people to church. I was the outreach person. Yep. I was. Um, we Let would me do, volunteer. Yeah, I was. When I say I was always in church, I was always in church. She wasn't outside. I wasn't outside. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't. When I was married, I wasn't outside. I was inside taking care of my family, doing what I was supposed to do. I still take care of my family now. Don't get it twisted. But um, what I'm saying is one of the things I learned with like being married and going to church and all that, they talk about being blameless. Now, you can't be 100% blameless in a relationship, right? But what we talk about is like, so you guys get in an argument and a lot of times women are like, well, it was because he did this, this, and this, but what did you do? Right. What did you did something in that situation too? Right. So there was a lot of times once I finally started, um, our relationship was so bad when I was married. And so there was times where I was like, okay, let me start trying stuff. So I started trying our yeah, trying for the marriage. Like, I would be like, let's go to church. Let's do this. Let's do that. And then when that stuff didn't work, I was like, okay, what is it that you want to do to fix the marriage? What is it that we could do together? Like, do you want to try counseling? Do you want this? Do you want that? So it became before I actually left the marriage that I was okay with leaving because I felt like I already tried everything i've done what i could i felt like you gave your 120 gave, yeah there wasn't a reason like i you know hit him the day before and now i could be blamed for this stuff too no i felt like i did what i was supposed to do in this relationship to now i can move on mm-hmm. so you did your best but the best was not good enough exactly so here we are so here we are back outside no, <laughs> <laughs> right 
<laughs> outside is I'm where it's outside. at. Since nothing ever changes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of time. I'm talking with my rats. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Vince, <laughs> I'm curious to hear <laughs> some advice that you've gotten because you have a very interesting take on dating <laughs> and relationships. Have you gotten advice that stuck with you or does, you know, like, or that like you carry with you? Oh my God, I feel like I'm going to say something that you just, uh, I expected that. What? <laughs> well, might as well I say mean, it there's, then. I yeah. Know. yeah. <laughs> if we're already expecting it. Bro, man up. <laughs> I was like, all right, you, mm-hmm. you right. I'll go to the gym. <laughs> I'll, I'll start saving money. I'll be like. Man up. That's what, that's what yeah, it was. Yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. It was like, take accountability for things. And I was like, well, you're right. I mean, I wasn't the best boyfriend. I wasn't the most able to provide i wasn't the you know the most empathetic and stuff like that and Mm -hmm. you know work on yourself and then if you're good enough for yourself you'll eventually be good enough for somebody else Mm. do you think you took that advice soundly like being more empathetic and so i'm working on that part okay (laughs) (laughs) i was i'll be uh, oh you know like (laughs) okay accountability you know what i'm saying like i I know that i i don't i i'm not the best as far as like empathy but Mm -hmm. um but I, I try to be responsible for my own actions and, and, and you know, be more uh, reliable for everybody else. It's a step in the right direction. Good yeah. job. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say something else. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not, not, I, I did not expect that from you. Yeah. At all. Good job. Oh. And yes, I like that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But no, what I was going to say is that. um, We are going to (laughs) date. I feel like. I'm breaking her down. I feel like with, uh, I'm going to say it again, with women, I'm sorry, but I feel like we tell people too much about what's going on in our relationships and taking advice. Now, don't get me wrong, listening to your friends sometimes could be great, sometimes not. Um, But I feel like sometimes your business is your business and Mm -hmm. it needs to stay like that because how many times if you didn't vent it to your friend and your friend's like, well, just leave him alone, blah, blah, blah. But you already know in your mind, I'm going to be back with him tonight. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. This is, you know what I mean? So there's that. And I just feel like life is too short. I feel like if you want that person, go for that person. Shoot your shot. Mm -hmm. Can I add to the first thing that you said? As far as like... um. Uh, you shouldn't vent or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I, w- I would I would say it's okay to do that as long as you do it with your partner first, mm-hmm. and then like like let's say if we're dating and then and and I vent to you some things that I disagree with you on, and mm-hmm. then you're strong willed to to your point of view. Yeah, and I still don't agree with you. Yeah, I might vent to Ari mm-hmm. to get A another perspective. person's perspective. Right. I definitely agree with you though, because so, like yeah. I talk to I talk about my relationship a lot on here, but there's yeah. nothing that I've said on here that I haven't said to him, you yeah. know, yeah. and that he doesn't know I'm saying on here, you know. Yeah. So I agree with you on that. So too. I, w- I would say don't just be like, oh, this bitch, I'm gonna talk to somebody else real quick, you know. Yeah. Not that I'll be like, look, you know, we'll talk about it first. If we still don't agree, then find a mediator. But right. there's definitely some things that, like you said, that are just for you guys. Like right. there's shit that people shouldn't be knowing. Period. You know. So. Mm-hmm. I feel like you guys are both right. Yeah. No, that's actually a really good point, talking to your person first. Mm-hmm. Before, because a lot of times if you did talk to your person first, there wouldn't be a need for you to vent to. That's true. Mm-hmm. Somebody else. But sometimes I vent to friends just to vent, not necessarily looking for an answer. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's, it's almost like getting financial advice from broke friends. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Why? Yeah. I just want to vent. I just want to vent about my relationship. But you probably are the last motherfucker I need relationship advice from. From right. I just need to vent to somebody. Right. Um. But what I'm saying from like a woman's point of view, a lot of times venting to other women actually causes more harm. More harm because they'll be the first one to be like, "Leave that guy." You yeah. Know, blah, blah, or blah. now they they don't like him and then when you bring them around now they got an oh attitude yep with they'd be him. acting so they be mm-hmm. so, yeah stuff wow. that's what i mean by that guys are different but um with women 
especially that that happens because oh, yeah. I I do it I do it with my friends. <laughs> I do when they tell me stuff about they man. I'm like mm. when they come around, I'm like. Mm. <laughs> that's why we love Jasmine. <laughs> Sometimes if they ask, don't ask me a question. Like I've had my friends, men, one in particular, ask me a question, and I was like, "Do you really want to know what I have to say?" Yeah, I want to know because well, okay. And I laid into him like, "Don't ask me any questions because mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you the truth." So don't do that. That's one of my favorite responses to give to somebody. It's like, "Do you want me to tell you the truth, or you want me to agree with you?" Yeah. Right. Which one do you want? Yeah. I'm like, I don't feel like crying today. Just agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My next question that I have for you guys. Oh, yeah. That was the question. We already said it. Do you guys have any, um, like, people that you look up to or, or, like, a relationship that you look at and you're like, you know what? That's, like, what I hope to have one day. And if um, so, what kind of uh, traits do you see in those relationships that you want to mirror? I thought I did. I thought I had people I could look up to. But I looked at the relationship and I'm like, oh, I want something like that. Oh, that's lovely. Blah, blah, blah. Now, no, I don't. Because all relationships because, are Because, <laughs> no, not because of that. It's because there's been times where I've looked up to a relationship and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like their love, this, that, and the other. Next thing you know, <laughs> he's been worse. cheating on her for the last 10 right? years. And it's yeah. like, what? Like, why? You just, never know. you just never know what's really happening behind closed doors. Very true. So, no, there's not, there. I mean, there's certain takeaways from maybe some relationships, but to actually say I envy a relationship or I'm like, oh, I would, no, I don't do that. I used to, I don't anymore. Cause I'm just like, mm, how about like, um, like a, a f- I don't want to say a fake. Yeah. It's a fake one. Like, is there anyone like on TV, like family matters or something where you're like, that's to me a healthy Why you gotta be family matters so? Because that's what, what me and my family watch why all the time. Be family what are you ties, huh? Why couldn't it be family ties? Because well, my kids and I, we watch that. Why couldn't it be fresh off the boat? Um, it would be my wife and kids. <laughs> Mine is family matters. Me and my kids watch that every time we have dinner. That's why. What are you insinuating? Yeah. Okay. And family then, matters is a spinoff from Perfect Strangers. Is it really? Oh, I didn't know that. And I used to watch yeah. per- Perfect Strangers all the time Bulky. too. Mm-hmm. Never watched oh, it. Shit. I'm yeah, because not- Harriet used to be the uh, elevator operator. At the building where um, Balky, by my face right yeah, now, I was like, they, oh shit! Yeah, so they they actually she I was the elevator operator when um one of the first episodes of Family Matters, uh, she's with Carl, and then they said, oh yeah, uh, I got laid off from my job as the uh as an elevator. They're they're going with automatic elevators, and he's like, oh, oh that shit. sucks. Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah. that's so crazy. I'm gonna tell my kids that, and we're gonna go look. Anyway, for the Cosby's. Now. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's because I'm older. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Con- I mean, the uh, I guess the Cosby's, but um, yeah, fresh off the boat wouldn't be one of them because it's so Asian. Like the way that they f- function as a family, I'm like, nah, man, I have all that toxicity already. <laughs> Do you guys have any like either TV ones or real ones? T- TV ones, I would have to go way back, like Leave It to Beaver. You know what I mean? Damn, that's old. old. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You just told your age. Bro. How about you? Did Did you think of anyone? Yeah, I said my wife and kids. Oh, that's right. You did say that. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I yeah. love their relationship. They're funny. You know, they did have an episode where <laughs> all of a sudden she didn't gain weight because she had a baby. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, so, um, <laughs> 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 you look different. Um, yeah. I don't That's know if you guys one. watch this show, but it's called My uh, Friends from College. Have you guys seen that show? So it's a show that was on Netflix for a short amount of time. But there was a couple on there that um, I really, really loved their relationship because they were super playful and fun. But they would also call each other out on their bullshit, you know, like they would. And then at the end, it was like the communication and like how they worked through it. But that, that one would have been mine for anyone that knows that show. How about you, Vince? Anybody in real life or for fakesies that you're like? I would love to have a relationship like that one day. I can't really think of anybody. Nothing really comes to mind. Um, I like Corey and Topanga's relationship, too. They're cute. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right? They were my favorite. <laughs> you know, mm, One Tree Hill? Mm-hmm. 
the basketball player and um I didn't watch that what's like, her religiously. Oh, I did. I didn't and watch it religiously. And then when I when I um became older, it was on Netflix and I sat down and watched, watched them it? all again. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, but One Tree Hill, the basketball player and she was supposed to be like the smartest girl in the school. She was some nerd, but somehow he got her pregnant during her last year of high school and how they ended up married and together. I think he cheated on her or some other stuff. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it was a it was a it was a doozy that one, but I loved it. Their love was really cute. So when you guys reflect on these, even back to leave it to Beaver or whatever, what what about those? Like what are the characteristics within those relationships that you're thinking about that you're like peace. Peace. Peace and quiet. It's like I don't know. It's just something about like finding somebody, I guess you you, you, I know I have to work on it, and there's always going to be the, the ups and downs, mm-hmm. right? But when you're obviously when you're watching a show, it's like all you see are the ups, right? There are there are probably episodes where there are downs, mm-hmm. there but, has you, to be, yeah. but you you remember the ups way more than the downs. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what it is. It's just the peace, and it seems like the the entertain I guess the entertainment value of it. It just seems like it's like, I guess, too good to be true. Yeah. Mine was mostly like the love you would see between the two. The you saw the downs, but it was mo- it was a lot of times the men coming to realize like if if it was the men, um, what they did wrong, and then going to their wife like you know open-minded like hey I can't, how can I fix this how can I and same thing with with the female if she did something wrong it was them working together to fix it and to be better and to not make the same mistake that really is what I remember that's kind of my same reasoning for the couple that I picked was just their their way of showing how they got through the hard times and yeah. how it made them closer. And then my particular couple was like very fun and like sexual with each other and stuff too. Like yeah. there was just that sense of friendship within the romance. Right. You know? Futurama. I, I want to date a girl with one eye. Okay. <laughs> Futurama. <laughs> that's, that's probably it. That's the best answer we're going to get from Vince. Yeah. Instant gratification. Yeah, with her one eye. With her one eye. (laughs) (laughs) Her lashes last twice as long, so she she can't see any other guys because she only has one eye. (laughs) Right. This guy. It's everything he's ever wanted, you know? All right. Now we have an eye for you. (laughs) (laughs) You're the only one I'm looking at. Yep. Well... (laughs) All right, I think that's the best advice I was going to get from a table <laughs> full of broken people. <laughs> Straight broke. Wow. Do you have any parting words, anybody, for anybody watching this episode about relationship advice? Yeah, I, I do apologize for the <laughs> for for all our adv- the advice that you received here. But, <laughs> <laughs> but if you're down and out and you don't feel like, uh, you know, and if you're single and you're looking for a wife or whatever and you don't know how to cook you could always order from mikey's meals and by using our code the babes 10 to save 10 percent off wow of your next meal prep order or if you would like to post some thirst trap pictures come to the pixel lounge and we'll take your pictures update your tinder profile and maybe objectify you in a way that you consent to Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Or do a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. That. Oh, there's that. Yeah. There's that. Because it's obvious been. from listening to this podcast, anybody can have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> anybody can talk. Right. Yep. Jasmine, any parting words? Nah. Nah. <laughs> Try it out. If it sucks. Well, move I on. mean, I shoot. I shoot my shot one time. If you don't. If you don't make it, I'm gone. Don't be, I don't go back around. <laughs> so girls don't go back around. I mean, you can. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just saying I don't personally, mm-hmm. like, there's too many people out here to be doing all that. Mm. 
I agree with that. I just don't want to feel stupid, you know, like I say, let's hang out. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, we'll figure it out, you know? Yeah. I hate those answers. It's either yes or no. Right. <laughs> like, stop beating around the bush. Yeah. yeah. Either you want it or you don't. Let's stop playing games. <laughs> yeah. I agree with that. No more games, guys. That's yeah, a good relationship that's what, advice. That's really what I was trying yeah, to say. Yeah, no more games. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if any of this advice ruins your relationship, I'm also sorry. <laughs> right. <laughs> but sorry. thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for sticking with us. If you sat through the whole entire episode, even with all the random takeoffs thank you so much <laughs> we appreciate you guys watching us and we'll catch you guys on the next one bye, bye. all right melinda's heel <laughs>